Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and today we are continuing our item overview series for Total War Three Kingdoms as we will be taking a look at all the followers available in the game. And much like what we did with all our previous overviews, we'll first take a look at all these items individually to note their stats, effects, and set bonuses before ending with the tier list. So let's get things started with the common followers. So like all the other items in the game, Followers will come with the same four rarity categories that ranges from common to unique, and each follower will also provide you with various amounts of stats and other bonuses. But unlike our previous overviews of weapons, mounts, and bows, there will not be any complete rarity sets, as in you're not going to find four items that progress from common to elite, much like you have horses where you have a common black horse, that will be upgraded until a elite black horse. We won't see that here. Each of these items tend to be more standalone, so we're going to have to do the overview pretty much individually. And in addition to the lack of this type of progression, the items are designed to be used for all classes. There are no class restrictions on any of these items, and they're all designed for various roles. So there's going to be items that's more focused on administrators, items that's more focused on leaders, items that are focused on battle. So we'll try to take that all into consideration when we do the final tier list. So with that said, let's get things started by first taking a look at an item that's actually not in the game, in the Prentice Crafter. So if we take a look here, this is an item that's actually in the game asset folders. You can summon this item using mods, but the game does not spawn this item if you play a regular vanilla campaign. It was introduced when first deployables were introduced. As you see, this item will grant you four points of satisfaction to the character equipped with this and one set of deployables that includes a oil, a tower, and wooden sticks to the own army that has this item. This is pretty cool. The early game satisfaction boost on individual characters, very useful and saves you some money from giving out titles. And the deployables are often quite strong given that you are given one tower. So this would be quite a fun item to see implemented into the actual game itself. I think there might be something wrong with the spawn chance or maybe this item was one being tested when deployable first being introduced as the image itself is also using the same adept image, I believe. We'll see the adept item a bit later on and we'll see the same exact image. But overall, this would be a cool item if they indeed want to use it. We'll still consider it because the asset files are in the game, so I'm going to assume the item is there. It's just not spawnable at this point. Then moving on, we have the craftsman. This is another one of our common item. This one's more geared towards administrators as you get two points of expertise, which will reduce construction cost and you get 5% income from industry. It's a nice little item. Then you have the devious attendant. Very simple, four points of stats, two in cunning, two in authority. Nothing so special about this one. An eavesdropper has only two points of stat, which is super low for any items with stats, but you also get five cover costs for enemy spies. So we're gonna see a bunch of items with spy defensive bonuses, whether increasing the undercover network cost or the cover cost for them. This is really useless in my opinion, because this will only slow down the enemy spy's activity against you, maybe by a turn, because it's not plus five every turn, it's plus five cost on each of their actions. And if the spy gains anything decent amount of cover, usually between five and 20, or maybe even 25 is a really high level spy, it's kind of pointless to have spy defense. The best spy defense is being very careful when you recruit generals. And if you're already doing that, you really don't need spy defense items. What the game really should do is change all these defensive spy items to offensive spy items. Have items that you want to give to spies that you want to send out. Imagine an item giving plus 5 cover gain per turn on your character. That way, you have more incentive to send out regular spies than relying entirely on turncoats, which are super efficient right now in the game. Because you're paying extra for the spy, you have to wait extra long for the spy to get recruited by the faction, and that's not always a guarantee. And then you find out they gain their stats super slowly, 
and it's a very bad feeling. But if you have these items, they will help you increase the value of the character. They'll be more likely to get recruited. Maybe an item that guarantees recruitment. It's just a different play style because turncoats pretty much made regular spies kind of pointless. And if the items can reflect that and fix it, it will be a very easy and useful fix for items like the eavesdropper, which kind of make conceptual sense as well because they're eavesdropping on the enemy faction, gaining you extra cover or extra undercover network costs, both of which would be fine. Then moving on, we have another set of four items here, starting with the guard. Now this is an early game item that has a very simple stat line, two points of instinct, but you get four points of satisfaction. As mentioned before, early game satisfaction management tends to be a bit difficult as you only have the leader and the heir, and you don't have that much authority or items helping boost your entire faction. So sometimes high level generals will get a little grouchy and want to leave or cause a red face giving you the minus 25% character experience gain faction wide. So using these items on the follower that gives satisfaction is actually very good because while accessory items tend to give satisfaction on every single accessory item, followers typically do not give any satisfaction. So anytime you see a follower item with satisfaction gain, it's pretty rare and pretty useful. Then we have the Herdsman, which again, very simple stat boost to resolve, gives the wedge formation to own army. That means if you put this item on some general in an army, every single cavalry unit in that army, assuming they have access to wedge, as in they're not a militia unit, then they'll be able to use wedge, regardless of you have a commander as a commanding general or having a high enough level strategist in the army. Then we have Labor Recruiter here. Uh, two points of resolve, pretty good for administrators for population growth, which is what's intended purposes, because you get 8k population growth in the minister commandery. This is super powerful and underrated, because 8k growth here means 8k per county. So you have a four counter commandery like, say, Huainan or Changsha. This item is worth 32k population growth per turn. That's super powerful because population eventually will get you additional benefits like increased number of building slots and also increase all income, increase replenishment rate. It's just an overall super good item for the common item rarity. Then we have the trader. Here we get two points of cunning. You get 5% trade influence. Both of these are very minor, but it also unlocks a assignment for your character, surplus markets, which is super good. It's 50% increase to commerce, 15% increase to industry, which is the most common combination of income sources in the game, especially for very lucrative commanderies. So having this assignment on characters is pretty valuable. Sometimes you would go out of your way to recruit some sentinels who are trader background in order to gain this assignment as they have exclusivity on this assignment. But if you have items like this, which typically have really no use because traders just simply don't offer enough stats, but if you give it to one of your court characters just to have them work on assignments, this will be the perfect item to give because surplus market is actually super strong. Then finally, we have two more items here in the common. We have the builder and military instructor. The builder gives two points of expertise and minus one construction time. You see here it also has a set bonus, and the set bonus is called the Builder, and it needs a Jade Snake, which is a silver item to complete. It gives you another construction time decrease for a Minister of Commanderies. Now this used to be quite good when the game first launched because you can save time, and time is money. But I believe after the recent changes to population, where you get additional building slot once you reach a million population, and then another one once you reach 2 million and so forth, this becomes much less impressive of an item because saving one turn versus being able to build two buildings at the same time, which means you're saving a lot of turns on construction really in the long term of things if you compare it to what was before, this item becomes a lot less valuable. Now, of course, if you don't have any good early game administrator item, this will be a great addition because it will jumpstart your economy by saving you some time. And I said 
time is money because once you upgrade faster, you can use the higher stats on the higher level buildings a bit faster as well. Then moving on, we have the military instructor, obviously a combat driven item. And in particular here, it only provides two points of instinct, unlock the loose formation, which is actually available to all units. So that part is actually a good thing. Then you have two different set bonuses, which can be either war, because you can't equip this item with both the six secret teachings and the art of war, since they're both accessory items. You have to choose. And the bonuses are a little bit different. The six secret teaching gives you 25% chance of ambushing for the own army, which is pretty nice. But the art of war is even better because you get 5% campaign movement range. And this campaign movement range is own army, which means the character that has this set does not need to be in the commanding position, which is often one of the prerequisites for campaign movement range. So this is a very good set in my opinion because mobility is highly valued in the game, or at least I value it pretty highly. So this makes it one of the better common items as well. Okay, so with that, we end our common items. We are gonna move on, and as you can see here, you see four refined items. But going forward, you're actually gonna see things mixed up quite a bit with the bronze and silver item and sometimes even gold item mixed in, because I'm gonna do things more thematically. So for example, the four items here are all combat related items. We see the adept, which provides four points of expertise, four points instinct, and just a formation unlock. Pretty boring item. And then you see master crafter with the same image icon as the adept, and also the same exact one they used for the apprentice crafter. This is once again an item that was not actually implemented in the game, but it's there in the game files you get eight points of uh, satisfaction. You get two sets of each of the pre-battle deployables. Would make this a pretty great item, except you can't actually spawn it in the game. And then moving on, you have military expert, four points of instinct, four points of authority. That's actually a little weird. We'll talk about the set bonuses a bit later. And it unlocks turtle formation, which would make this a good item, except for who would you put this item on? Like perhaps you would put this item on say a champion who is in an army that does not have a strategist or a commander and you want turtle for his units. But then how would instinct and authority help that character? So there's a lot of issues with the design of this item and the design of a lot of items in the game actually, but that's just a point I'm gonna make here. Then we have the officer, unlock circle and hollow square provides four points of authority, which once again is a question mark. A military requisition is not really worth considering. It's not that good of an assignment uh, to consider these items to add value there. The authority here is just weird because officer would probably benefit on, let's say, a faction leader or commander that you have on the battlefield. But if you have such a commander on the battlefield, they will automatically unlock circle and hollow square. So why would you need that as additional thing on this item? That just doesn't make a lot of sense. Then if you look at the set bonuses for Military Expert as we return, there's two of them. And they both combo with different books again, Wei Laozi and Wu Zi. And if you see the actual bonuses, they're more recruitment based. With the first one, you get plus two starting rank for all recruits for your own retinue. So ideally, you could micromanage your items to the point where you have this set bonus given to a single general right before you recruit troops on them, perhaps even on, say, a strategist. So you get level three tribuchets at the start, which wouldn't be so bad. And military expert does increase your instinct by four. So you get a little bit additional recruitment discount as recruitment discount is also based on your instinct stats. Then you can also swap over to the Wu Zi right after, or right before recruitment, if you don't have Wei Lao Zi. You can get minus one mustering turn, which will increase your initial mustering rate if you don't move your army. This is a super minor bonus and not really relevant. Of course, if you could work your mustering turn as in the minus ones down to minus eight, then you could achieve instant mustering because there's preset 
eight mustering bonuses. So it's kind of like 12%, it's 100% divided by eight, or I think you get 25% of the unit right away. So it's like 75% divided by eight. But if you could keep subtracting them, you could essentially run the number down to say one and you can have your troops ready the very next turn. You get like 75% mustering bonus plus your replenishment bonus. So you don't really need to get it that low. But if you get, let's say, like minus six mustering turns, you could pretty much achieve like next turn instant recruitment, which is pretty powerful, but not that useful in terms of a set bonus. At least I wouldn't go out of my way, try to get six minus one mustering turns. So moving on, we have another four items that are more combat driven. And these four tend to be either when commanding or uh, just for yourself. The Overseer, overall great item because of the 5% campaign movement range. You get 5% speed for own retinue. This is typically good on, let's say, a commander who is trying to give formations to the army. That four, it's in a lead position and does not have reach. So you might supplement it with this item. Or say a strategist that is running a lot of range unit, but that's the only general with reaching your army. The overseer will be perfect for that as well. The speed bonus would not apply as you can see here, or perhaps you want units, um, it doesn't matter what type of leading you're using, whether it's vanguard or champion, basically general with reach, you just want extra speed on your units. Maybe you have the vanguard with cavalry that could use charge, you get 5% campaign movement range. Those are all useful and you can kind of just ignore the stat boost there or perhaps your cavalry tend to be range cavalry. You never know. There's many ways to use this item. The bonuses typically are very good throughout. You also have a set bonus of Heart of Courage. We'll get back to this a bit later, but if you guys have watched the bow series, you know that this is Shamokus' unique bonus with his unique bow, his unique armor, and the overseer. And it's pretty strong. We'll look at it at the end here because we have other set bonuses here as well with a diviner item. And Diviner item gives you six points of cunning, six points of authority. That's pretty good. You get plus two morale when commanding and you get two set bonuses. So if you just look at the stat, it's very average, but the set bonuses will carry this item. Then we have the shaman, which gives us 10 points expertise and 10% chance of capturing general officers post battle. Now there is no conditional statement on these, but I have done some testing and I'm confident to say that Capture chance only applies to your lead general or the commanding general because it's a bonus on that character and the game treats capture chance. They only look at your first general. So your level on that general will matter whether they have skills like perceptive, which increase 10% or honorable, which decrease 10%, whether they have the skill patience, which increase 25%. Those will all matter. So the perfect capture general would be a high level general who has perceptive and patience and the shaman item that could be potentially, you know, 10% from perceptive, 10% from shaman, 25% from patient, that's 45%. And if you have high level, uh, the captured chance would increase based on your level all the way up to 50 something percent. So you could eventually get to about 100% capture rate, but that doesn't mean you automatically capture because the enemy will have an escape chance as well based on their level and their traits. So all those things should be taken into consideration together. Then finally, we have the bodyguard, which is the perfect duelist item. You get four points of resolve, increases your health, four points of instinct, increases your attack, and 10 points of melee evasion, which is defensive for you. You are your own retinue, I believe. So you also get that benefit and your units also get that benefit as well. So pretty good item overall. And then returning to the set bonuses we skipped over early on, we have Harder Courage 2, which is the bonus with the Red Wind, King Shamoko's armor, and this Overseer item. It grants your own retinue's fatigue immunity, which is insane. But you can only use this if you are King Shamoko or you have him. And that's still pretty good. Imagine playing a Naman campaign with King Shamoko or any other factions, you can confederate him and then you can have a retinue full of unbreakable tigers or crazy elephants that are fatigue immune. That's just a sight to behold. Then for the diviner, you have two choices here. You have the clay dog, which is a very easy item to acquire or the celestial sphere, which is a silver item. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's achievable as well. And here you get two faction-wide bonuses for Prime Minister, Heir, or Leader. You get either 5% income from all source, super good, 
or 10% character experience, average, but pretty good. Clay dog combo with another six points of authority, you basically get a leader that's 12 point authority, plus two morale when commanding, you know, commanders who is your leader can definitely command armies. It just be a little slow in terms of the army movement on the map because you don't have reach, but you do get 12 points authority, which increases morale right there, two points of morale on the item itself. Then for the whole faction, you get 5% income from all sources. Not a bad choice. Then finally, we're going to close things out for the combat focus items with engineering, inspector, and professional instructor, all of which are silver quality. Engineering has really good stat combo, six points of expertise, six points of resolve. This is good for combat. You get a lot of defensive stats. This is also great for administrators. Even though the bonus is more combat focused with the own army increased rate of wall and settlement damage, if you take the time to siege, you still would use this item on just say a um, administrator because you would get cost reduction for the expertise and population growth for the resolve. Then the inspector gives six points of expertise, six points of cunning, three morale for melee cavalry. Pretty standard. You might slap this on say a strategist to give them cunning for just extra ammo and then some expertise for survivability or maybe a sentinel running a range composition. The melee cavalry for own army could be applied to your melee cavalry under a commander perhaps that's in the same army. You probably wouldn't run this item on the commander. You also do get a set bonus. We'll look at that at the end here because we have to talk about professional instructors. This is a very interesting item because the bonus aside from the stats is minus 25% fatigue rate and own army, which automatically gives me this idea. What if we have three of these items in the same army? That's minus 75% fatigue rate. And we have skills on certain general that gives fatigue resistance, which I don't know if it's the same thing to minus fatigue rate. I don't think it is because that's the rate of you gaining fatigue, but that also feels like what fatigue resistant means because you could end up with a situation where you have, let's say minus 100% fatigue resistance or fatigue rate if they're the same thing. And wouldn't that mean your entire army suddenly become fatigue immune? That feels pretty strong, but getting three of these items or maybe two of these items is probably very hard because there's no good way to spawn follower items. And that brings us to another point. If the game could allow, say, school buildings to generate these items, it will add a lot of value to the school buildings, like what happened to the forge, and also gives you some more difficult choices when deciding which six buildings to use in your very valuable and limited six building slots in each commandery. And you can also see more of these items and set bonuses come into action in the game. And speaking of set bonuses, people's justice on the instructor is one with the method of Sima, which is a accessory item once again, plus 6k population growth, which only makes this item even more weirder because you get six points of expertise, six points of cunning, doesn't scream administrator, although the expertise does help. You also get melee cavalry bonus, which also doesn't scream, say, strategist or sentinel. It screams commander. And then finally, you get a administrator bonus on top. That's 6k population growth. It's just a very weird item. It's silver. The stat combines 12 points. It's not that bad. The 6k population growth is good. It's not as good as, say, the labor recruiter, which gives 8. And you can use it right away. It's a common item. You can get it pretty easily versus this one with a set bonus. But let's just consider it all together at the end in the tier list. Then moving on, we have some satisfaction items. These are my favorite in the game. These are the go-to ones that I look for on turn one whenever I start a new campaign, especially on higher difficulty. Because on higher difficulty, you're slapped with satisfaction penalties on your character. So managing that early game is often a chore. Here we have some ways to fix that and to make things worse. Because starting with the eunuch, you actually lose 10 points of satisfaction if you put this item on a character that's prime minister, heir, or faction leader. You do gain minus 5% corruption though, which is kind of counterintuitive because Unix heralded in corruption as well as dissatisfaction among the courts. But regardless, this is actually a good item. There's a couple use for this. Say in the late game, you have the Imperial Court. 
You have seven characters generating authority to counteract satisfaction. You have a bunch of slots to put items in to create a satisfaction friendly environment. You can definitely afford 10 points of satisfaction. And if you can't afford 10 points satisfaction, you gain minus 5% corruption. That's really good. I think that item is very useful if you think about it that way. Or you can trade this item to a faction that you want to steal characters from. Because most likely the AI will see this item, see that it has two bonuses to faction leader, even though one's a penalty. They will slap it on one of their faction leader, prime minister, or heir. That will cause a faction wide effect for them and make things easier for you to get turn codes or just to convince characters by discrediting them to get them to join you instead. Then the other three items here are basically satisfaction boost for your own faction. Legalist Fanatic is six points only, but you do get six points of authority, six points of resolve. That's pretty good for stats. Concubine gets 10 points of satisfaction, six points of cunning. Philosopher does the same thing, except for it does have a set bonus, and the set bonus will give you another four points of public order faction-wide, which is a good synergy, good design. And all you need is the classics of Filial Piety, which I believe is only a bronze item. And then moving on, we have four more. Uh, the first two are more counter spy. The last two are more income based. And these are all prime minister, heir, or faction leader items. That's what we're kind of focusing on right now. First, you have the cryptographer, four points of cunning, 10 points of cover costs. This is the evolution of the eavesdropper. And then the spy master is the evolution of the cryptographer with six points of cunning. You have an extra assignment. And then you get 15 points of undercover network cost for enemy spies. Sure. If you stack a bunch of these, you can pretty much protect your faction from spying, but eventually they can do it. Even let's say we have three spy masters and we put them all on our prime minister, heir, or leader, you get plus 45 points. That might protect you for, you know, extra two, three turns per action. But why don't you just be careful when you recruit characters? So once again, I'm going to make the argument that it's better to have spy friendly items helping your spy be more efficient therefore encouraging you to send out more spies rather than having these spy defensive items in the game then we have master craftsman and forge master both of which are silver both of which provides 12 points of stats a mix of expertise authority instinct the authority is quite nice because this is a faction wide bonus but the prime minister role here for the master craftsman is only 10 percent from industry, whereas the Forge Master is 15%. So it's quite high on the Forge Master compared to the Master Craftsman, but they're still both really good because 15% from industry is pretty much the same quality as the Grand Excellency bonus, which costs you about 250 in title salaries just to assign. Here you get it for free, and you also get two set bonuses here. For the Master Craftsman, you get a set bonus with ceremonial axe or stone axe which is bronze item i believe you get a minister bonus completely useless just ignore it engine smith with mozi which is a book and you get increased rate of wall sieges this one is more of a thematic bonus and it has to do with mozi who is from the spring autumn period and he was a philosopher but also an engineer so they built a bunch of siege weapons during that time, which explains why you have the rate of wall and settlement damage during sieges. Then moving on, we have scholar, merchant, representationist, and tycoon. And these represent the trade influence and character experience, um, character experience being only on the scholar. Uh, all cunning boost and the representationist cunning boost is ridiculous, 15 points. And the tycoon has a mix of authority, which actually helps here. And notice also surplus market. So it makes it an extra special item. And there's a bunch of set bonuses among these uh, characters here, starting with the scholar and the merchant. Scholar is very well synergized because if you finish the set with Book of Change, which is not an easy item to acquire, you do get another 10% character experience. So 20% total. And then Merchant, same thing, the nine chapters on mathematical art. It's only a bronze item this time, not too hard to get. You get another 25% trade influence. So both of these have set bonuses that make their initial bonus even better. And that's a great design because then you don't have to worry about is your character a prime minister, heir, or faction leader, or are they a administrator? Because they can't be both at the same time, which ruins a lot of set bonuses. 
Then for the Tycoon, it has a military bonus. If you have the Jade Archer, you actually get 25% range damage, which is super good in my opinion, because you can use this item without worrying about the trade influence part, because that's not even that great. Just have it on a strategist, give them a Jade Archer, which also boosts cunning. Then you get a super high cunning character with extra 25% range damage for own army. And that's a pretty good combination there. Then finally, we have three more items that give character faction-wide bonuses, and these happen to be all public order bonuses. Astronomer is cunning boosting, and the Law Enforcer and Taoist Monk are authority boosting. And once again, we have a few more set bonuses. The Astronomer bonus is actually quite good. You only need a Water Clock with this. Water Clock is a common item. You get 5% campaign movement range when commanding. That part's a little bit limiting, but still a very good bonus overall. Then for Martial Law, for the Law Enforcer, here's where you run into a problem of what this item is designed for. You have authority boosting stat that combos with Discourses of the State, which is another authority boosting book that gives corruption reduction faction wide. But their combined bonus is a administrator bonus of plus four public order, which would not work if your character happens to be Prime Minister Arrow Faction Leader for the two public order points, as well as the corruption reduction on the discourse of the state, which are better bonuses than just four points of public order in the commandery that you are administering, because the plus two is faction wide. So this bonus makes no sense, but individually speaking, the item is just fine. And then moving on, we have some more items here, uh, focus on reserve. There's a good mix, starting with the farmer, which is food production, technically not reserved, but kind of related in the grand scheme of things. It's a minister bonus. Mathematician is weird here because it gives reserve faction wide. I don't know why you want a plus four reserve faction wide, but it's here. And you get cunning stats on a faction leader, prime minister heir, which also doesn't make a lot of sense. Then you have the land shaper, which has great stats. I get expertise and resolve, which flashes administrator in my mind. And then you get plus five reserve, which is a terrible bonus, but the stats good. Then for the provincial advisor, you get six points of resolve, six points of authority, some useless assignment, uh, public appeasements for public order. It's okay, but it's really not that good. Reserve also not that good. You do get a set bonus with a jade sickle that gives you extra food production. But if we just look at the farmer item from earlier that gives 20% by itself, why would we want to work so hard for a jade sickle, which boosts cunning, I believe, on item that boosts authority and resolve? to give you some extra reserves and food production. Just seems like a bad item set in total. And then we end things here with some more public order, but this time pretty much for administrators. You get local administrator, Confucian Sage, and Architect. Architect actually does not boost uh, public order. It gives you some cost discounts. It gives you six points of expertise, six points of resolve. Pretty well designed item. Other two here are a little bit more weird because it's cunning and authority, both of which have nothing to do with administrators, but the public order does, and they both have set bonuses. The local administrator set bonuses with Stone Rat, very easy item to get, 20% extra peasantry income for administrator. So there's synergy here. You can go peasantry heavy and get 20% from this, and then also four points of public order, which makes sense if you're running like a high population commandery. And then for Confucian Sage, it's very hard to get the combo because Book of Documents is a unique item. But if you do get it, you get 10 points of satisfaction. And that's pretty much on par with Concubine and Philosopher, which make this item a little bit worse because the item itself only gives a minister bonus. If you get the insane combo with the Book of Documents, which is possible, we have it currently in our Liu Bao campaign, but it's pretty much impossible to get regularly. You do get 10 points of satisfaction on top, which would be useful. Then moving on, we have a few more administrator items, starting with the farm manager, four points of expertise, four points of resolve, perfect combination, 10 points of peasantry or 10% peasantry boost, pretty good. Tax collector, the stat's a little bit worse. You don't get the four points of expertise, you get four points of authority instead. You still get 10% from peasantry, which doesn't make it bad. And then Artisans, four points of expertise. You don't get another four points of stats, which is a little bit lacking, but then you get 10% from industry. And industry base tend to be a lot higher than peasantry base. So you are going to come out ahead with this bonus. And speaking of this 10%, you also have the foreman, 
same exact bonuses on the item itself, but five set bonuses. And the five set bonuses are all cost reduction bonuses. They're all very strong cost reduction bonuses. You get 25% of construction cost discount for the blue buildings, the green buildings, the red buildings, the yellow buildings, or the purple buildings, depending on what you combo things with. And if you consider other Wuxing synergies with your other existing buildings with this combo, oftentimes you will have free upgrades and free construction of a certain type of building. And you can also swap these items around before you construct in order to achieve the desired bonuses for what type of building you're building in one commandery because things can change. You are building multiple colors anyways. So very strong item here. Then we have two more administered items, and these are silver and gold. We finally have our first unique gold item in the prefix. And the Jade Sculptor first has expertise and cunning. It's not bad, but not great because you don't have resolve. You get cunning instead. You do get 10% income from commerce, which is the first commerce boosting administered item and the only commerce boosting administered item in the game. You also have a set bonus that's actually super strong, which we'll look at shortly. First, we'll take a look at our first unique item, boosting eight points of cunning, eight points of authority. Surplus distribution is average, not worth talking about. And they get 10% income from all sources. That's pretty much a burnt trait buff, and it's quite strong. You don't get the negatives of increased desire for independence here, and you can't really complain about all income boost. It's not super good, but I'm sure everyone's happy getting a unique item. Now, for the Commander of the Masses set bonus on the Jade Sculptor, this is probably Liu Bei's dream. So this would be the item you want to get if you play Liu Bei's faction. Because if you have the set bonus on your leader, they will give you additional minus 25% upkeep for militia units. Now note here, the right of Zhou and J Sculpture are both silver items. So you could technically get multiple copies of this set bonus. So even if you're not playing Liu Bei, who has minus 50% upkeep for militia units anyways, you could potentially run into a situation where you get four sets of these and then you have free militias going forward in your games. And then there's also a local commandery bonus of plus two public order. Now this doesn't mean you need to be the administrator, you just need to be standing in the commandery and you can give them plus two public order, which gives you a lot more flexibility. And then if you are the administrator anyways for the 10% income from commerce, then this would apply as well. And then 4% replenishment to your own army. So that works just very well together with the militia spam. That's what this item is kind of intended for and quite fun overall, especially if you're Liu Bei, which has already cheap militias to begin with. Then finally, we're going to end things with the last four unique items. We already looked at one in the prefix, and all four of these have a set bonus, so I might as well show the set bonuses because sometimes it's very easy to achieve like this one and sometimes very hard. So starting things off, we had the Elite Trainer. Very boring item. 24 points of stat, cunning, instinct, authority, nothing else special about it. The set bonus is with the Book of Mountain C, which is an easy item to get and also a very powerful item because it gives 10% campaign movement range, satisfaction, and cunning. And the bonus itself gives 10 points of military supplies. Not so fancy, but we'll take it. And then moving on, we have Hua Tuo, which is the legendary doctor. He is both a character in the game as well as a follower item in the game. And he will give you 8 points of resolve, 10 points of satisfaction, which makes him pretty much similar to a philosopher or a concubine, except for instead of cunning, you're getting resolve. You do get additional set bonus if you can get your own manual, which is an accessory item in the game. Insane stats, 10 points of expertise, 10 points of resolve, 10 points of cunning, 10 points of satisfaction. And together, you get 5% extra replenishment, which I believe is a little bit low for a reward that's uh, two gold items for the set bonus. Make it 25% and it wouldn't be too ridiculous. Zhang Jiao has it passively as a faction, so why not give Hua Tuo the legendary doctor 25% replenishment? And that can make campaigns where you happen to get both of these insanely strong. Then we have the professor item. Here you get 8 points of expertise, 8 points of cunning, 15% trade influence. Nothing too crazy here if you consider, let's say the representationist gives you 15 points of cunning and then 15% trade influence on top of that. So the stat boost here is not too impressive for a unique item. The set bonus is with another gold item and together you only get 25% extra food production. I think this is actually a pretty bad item, uh, but this gold, if you do get a unique item, you're never crying about it. And then finally we have our last gold item, Provincial Auditor. 
This one's quite strong. You get eight points of expertise, eight point authority. So it's good for leader and good for administrator in that you're gonna see that in the set bonus and the other bonuses. The other bonus is 10% to all sources for administrator commandery. So this is good for administrator, 10% for all sources, very strong. If you get the set bonus with the three strategies of Duke of the Yellow Rock, which is just a bronze item, so very easy to achieve, you get the Hand of the King bonus. And the Hand of the King bonus is minus 10% corruption faction wide, also super strong. And if you look at the strategies of the Duke of Yellow Rock, you get extra authority, which is good for leaders, and you also get 5% income from all sources, which is better than 10% from all sources in just one commandery, because that one's faction wide. So you end up getting 5% from all sources with this combo, plus minus 10% corruption and 14 points of authority. All very good, if you can get the Provincial Auditor to begin with. And that's going to do it for all the overviews of the items. We're going to jump back into the tier list and try to rank all these and make sense of them, because it's going to be quite difficult, since some are good for administrators, some are good for leaders, some good for military. So I'm going to use my best judgment. So let's hop over and rank these items. Alrighty, so here we are in the tier list and we have all the items here and they're pretty much in alphabetic order by their um, item rarity. Now I know the refined exceptional are kind of mixed up, but that's because exceptional it starts with an E and the refined starts with an R. So that part bear with us. Uh, but overall, let's start ranking them from S to D. We'll start with the bottom tier. We'll start with D tier because it's pretty easy to explain how bad some items are. And probably the best one from the D tier is probably going to be rare ones with better stats, but just terrible effects. And that's going to be something like the Spy Master, which we talked about. You know, it does give you extra point to counter Spy, but it's just not really worth it. And then along the same line, uh, Cryptographer would also be included here. And then we have the Devious. Oh, actually, we have the Eavesdropper. All these Spy items are not good. Uh, DV's Attendant just provides four points of stat, also terrible. Herdsman's not that useful because if you have units that could use the Wedge Formation, you're already not in the early game. You're constructing a really bad army if you don't have a way to give formations except for using the Herdsman. So this is just an item you would just trade away. And then you have some badly designed items as well. Let me think. There is going to be Mathematician which gives reserve faction-wide and cunning, both of which do not go well on your leader. And then you have, let's say, Officer, which gives authority, but unlocks two formations, which is redundant for any commander who might want to use this item. And that might do it for all the D tier. Everything else is redeemable, but these I don't really see a point. Now you could argue that the Spy Master does provide six points of cunning and you know, your strategist could use that. Sure, but let's take things holistically. Like I could bump it to C, but I can also say it's the best one in D. And I think we can call it fair here. And then moving on to C tier, let's start with something like the Adept, which also gives formations, but give eight point of total stats, instinct and expertise, which is pretty good for combat. So I could see it work and the shield wall that it gives are on sentinel units so sentinels could use exactly the stat that he provide but i can see some synergies there that's not there for the officer and then we have provincial advisor which is again another silver item with good stats but not very useful in terms of design you give six points authority six points of resolve five reserve and if you can achieve the set bonus 25 percent food just all over the place not really any logic to it and speaking of food production, we can probably throw the farmer there. I don't think you need to get 20% extra food production from your administrator item. You can get four resolve from here, but it's just not the optimum one. If you have anything else going for you in terms of um, having administrator items, you probably just want to avoid this one. And then going on from here, we can also talk about some other administrator, let's say law enforcer. So you get four points of authority, two points of public order. You do get a set bonus, I believe, for the law enforcer, but it's weird because the two public order on the item is faction wide, but the set bonus is only for administrator. So another bad design and a little bit better design, but not any better would be the Taoist monk, which does not have a set bonus and functions exactly the same as the law enforcer. And then we also have some 
military focus ones. Let's do military expert, also a badly designed item, focuses on uh, more recruitment bonuses. You have a mix of authority stats in there with instinct. I just don't see why you would want to use this. Perhaps if you want to micro and get two extra rank, you could use this, but it doesn't make this item good, nor would you want to keep this item on the character after you have uh, used the abilities. And then let's see if there's anything else we should include here. Add up. I think that's it. I think everything else might be a little bit more redeeming. These are more of the design flaws or just the stats are just too weak to really consider. Then to the B tier, we should have a bunch. Let's start with some of the more rare ones. We can do Confucian Sage, which by itself is not too good in terms of the item itself, but it has a really strong set bonus, except you need uh, the Book of Documents, which is a unique item. But if you can get that, you do get 10 points of satisfaction, which is very highly valued as you can see from this tier list going forward. Then we have some basic administered item, let's say the tax collector. This will give us 10% peasantry, but the stat design of four points resolve, four point authority is not optimum. If we could get some expertise in there, it would be even better. Speaking of expertise and income, Craftman makes the list. I know we still have a lot of common items here because they're not all that bad. So Craftman here will give you 5% industry, which we talked about have way higher base value than peasantry or commerce. So 5% of that is worth a lot more, say 10% of peasantry. You also get some expertise on this, which is good for a cost discount. And then beyond this, let's see, what else can we have? We can probably add some more common items. Let's do the guard. The good thing about the guard is you get satisfaction. Most followers do not give satisfaction. Guard is a very easy to achieve early item. If you spawn random items per turn, the common ones will come more frequently than the other ones. So it's more likely you get these items early on. And once you have them, it can help you manage some of the satisfaction, which can be quite difficult on higher difficulties. And then we're also going to slap the trader in here. The trader stands out because it gives a good assignment. The 5% trade influence is really not something that you should consider, but having surplus market on any character you want is pretty good. And speaking of these common items, let's slap more of them here. Builder, minus one construction time. That can go to two if you complete the set bonus. It's not bad. It just fall off a little bit after the population change. And the military instructor is better than military expert in my opinion, just because the set bonus is more relevant with the ambush chance and the campaign movement, especially the campaign movement being own army instead of wing commanding. And then I think we can do a few good stat items that has really no good shine. Let's say engineer. So six points of expertise, six points of resolve, good for any administrator. Uh, wall destruction, if you want um, to siege, it's also a pretty good item. Uh, it's silver, 12 points of stat, can't really complain about it. Same thing in that light, uh, land shaper, also 12 points of stats. Uh, same exact stat boost, and you get reserve for this one, I believe. Five reserve, that part's not really good, but 12 points of stats in expertise and resolve are pretty good. And then we can also throw in some well-designed item. If these are not well-designed, we have merchant, which gives trade influence and set bonus gives more trade influence. That's always great design. Scholar, which gives character experience boost when leader of prime minister or heir. And then if you complete the set bonus, another 10%. That's also really, really good. And then let's see what else we can throw in here. Or are we done here? Let's throw in Inspector. Now the stat boost on this is six points cunning, six points expertise, and you get like three points of morale for melee. It's weird. I think, hmm, maybe I'll throw it down. It has one redeeming fact. If you can complete the set bonus, you get 6k population growth per turn, uh, per county in the administrator. And then you also get expertise on this item, which works well for administrator. So even though it's poorly designed in that you have like a minister bonus, you have an army bonus, you have some random cunning, you have some random expertise, I still think maybe it's more B than C. So I think we'll keep it here. It's on the low end, but it'll stay here. And then we can also throw in the astronomer. It's not impressive in terms of the stat, four points of cunning and two public order faction wide. But if you can combine with the water clock, which is not too hard to get, it's a common item. 
you get 5% campaign movement range when commanding. So that's kind of restricting it a little, but I think anytime you can get extra movement, it's pretty good. And I think that's going to do it for B. We can move on to A. And we got to throw some of these in right away. So Apprentice Crafter, I know it's not in the game right now technically, but if it was, I would put it as A. Four points of early game satisfaction, a whole set of pre-battle deployables, definitely worth including in any army. You probably just slap this on as someone who's complaining on the field, because if they're already complaining on the field, it means they're too high level, it means they're very useful general in the battle, and then deployables are also very useful. Labor Recruiter should also be here. 8k population is very, very good, especially after the latest population change where you get all income from it, as well as additional build slot. And then from before, you get the replenishment rate. Having this per county is a great way to counteract negative public order because public order only punishes you up to minus 12k per county. So with this item, you already solve two thirds of that. As long as your character has decent resolve, which you probably should, you will be able to withstand even negative 100 public order and still grow your population in that commandery, which is what most people worry about when they farm rebels. They worry about not having any population. You have a labor recruiter, you solve that problem. Then for high stat items that are decent, let's say architect, it has the resolve and expertise that you would want on administrator as well as 5% construction cost discount. We can probably also throw in, let's say, local administrator, also a good administrator item. If you can uh, complete the set, you get 20% peasantry income, which is the highest amount you can find in the game for item sets um, for peasantry, usually 10%. We already saw that with, um, uh, where are they? The tax collector and farmer. Where's the farmer? Wait, did we not throw the farmer in there? The farm manager. Hmm. Well, I guess the farm manager can go here right after that. It's better than the tax collector because it gives resolve and expertise and the same 10% peasantry. Uh, but because the stat synergizes better with administrator, I think it can be ranked higher than tax collector because that one gives cunning, I believe, or authority uh, instead of expertise. So yeah, let's slap these two together because this is 10% by itself. This is 20% if you complete the set bonus. And then we can probably also throw in this professional instructor. This is more battle based. This one's the minus 25% fatigue rate. And then we can throw in a couple more income ones, 10% industry income, always really, really good. Um, really good duelist item. You get the 10%, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? You get the 10, 10 points of melee evasion. You get instinct, you get resolve, all very battle worthy stats. And then we're also going to throw the Unix in here uh, because you get the flexibility of using it for anti-corruption in the late game or early game traded way to steal enemy characters. Four man, we're going to save for S tier. And then Master Crafter, we're probably also going to save for uh, S tier because of Apprentices right here. Overseer is probably also S tier. Representation is probably will go here. Uh, it's not as good to be an S tier. It does provide an insane amount of cunning. 15 points of cunning, which is really what's going for it. It does give you a little bit of trade influence, 15%, I believe. It's not bad, but I don't think that's what you use this item for. Actually, no, I think it's 10% trade influence, 15 points of cunning. Um, it's just the cunning is good. Use it for the cunning. And then what else can we throw in here? I think we can throw a gold item in here. The prefix, the one without any special uh, set bonuses, but it does give um, pretty good uh, bonuses with 8 points of cunning, 8 point authority, and 10% all sources as administrator. The only thing holding it back is that both of the stat increases have nothing to do with administrators. Cunning and authority really has nothing to do with administrators, but you would always say yes to 10% from all sources. We can probably also slap in the Elite Trainer, which does have a set bonus. The set bonus is... Um, with the Book of Mountain and Sea. I think it gives you extra military supplies. Really useless. But you do get 24 points of stats. So if you value just raw stats, this would be the best item for raw stats. But it doesn't make it a standout. So what we have left here are items that I think are S tier. Yeah, I think so. I think everything else is S tier. And we can talk about why. So concubine, obviously, 10 points of satisfaction. And that brings us to Philosopher. 
which has 10 point satisfaction and also a set bonus on top of that that can give you extra public order. Legalist Fanatic is not as good as these in terms of total satisfaction provided, only 6 points, but that still helps in the early game and you also get a little bit of extra um, authority on this, so that could maybe push another point or two, so maybe you have like 7 point technically on the Legalist Fanatic. And then we have the Diviner, which gives a pretty decent um, set bonus option. You have the option of combining it with the Stone Rat, I believe, which is uh, pretty easy to find for 5% uh, faction-wide income. Or you can use a different item for 10% character experience faction-wide. You also get authority on this item, so it's pretty good leadership item or just for your leaders. And then Forge Master, 15% industry, nothing to say there, 10% um, commerce. And then you also get a huge boost to the militia and replenishment if you can complete the set bonus. Master Craftsman is the 10% uh, industry one, but these are both faction wide. I just wouldn't complain if I get either. Uh, I could drop it to here, but I think it's way better than any of these items. So I'm going to keep it up here. Uh, Tycoon is not so impressive by itself. Stat boost is great, surplus mark is great, but if you can complete the set, which is not too hard to do, uh, you need a jade item. I know it's silver, but once you do, you get a heavenly flight bonus that gives you 25% extra range damage, which is always quite strong. Uh, Foreman, super flexible. It's for 10% industry for minister commandery. You also get those five set bonuses for discounting. Master crafter, currently not in the game, but if it was, it would be S tier with two sets of deployables, eight points of satisfaction. Overseer has the speed boost as well as the campaign movement boost, set bonus with Shamoko's armor to give fatigue immune to whole retinue. That's pretty strong. Shaman item is my favorite item that was introduced in the Furious Wild because it increases capture chance, helps you to collect characters. Then finally, just some really good unique items. Um, this would be the best item in the game if you could get it because flexibility is very, very high with this. You can get 10% when you're doing administrator, all sources. You can get 5% um, all income from the set and minus 10% corruption. Basically the set is with the three strategies which gives the minus 5% and um, the 5% income and then you get the minus 10% for completing the set of the corruption reduction, which is super strong. 10% faction wide is just automatically included for you know potential administrator or not administrator, potential prime minister, leader or air role that's like one you want to look for what gives guajia and Topi so much value in the game hua tuo uh it's kind of funny here hua tuo gives eight points of um resolve and 10 uh, 10 points of satisfaction so that would put it on par with you know the likes of philosopher and concubine right away and then the set bonus if you can get it with the manual another five percent replenishment on top it's just really hard to get because both the combo are unique uh, that applies to the Professor as well, which has two combos that are both unique item. You get 8 points of expertise, 8 points of cunning, 15% trade influence, the set bonus is for 25% food. Now that I think about it, that needs to go down to A. It's not so impressive. I think Hua Tua can accept because the 10 point of satisfaction is on par with both the Concubine and the Philosopher. The set bonus is also pretty good. This one, not so much. And the combination of two unique items for a set is pretty much impossible to think about in any campaign. So that's going to do it for us. This is going to be our tier list. Lots on the top with the S. I think with follower items, uh, there's no real bad follower items. That slot has the least competition. And most of these items are pretty useful. And you wouldn't want to trade these away in most instances. You end up with a lot more accessories and armors because armor has unique armor uh, competing with them. So these items you definitely want to keep. And you can pretty much find a use for most of these items. Even let's say a D tier item like the Spy Master, like you can see value there with the six points of cunning that you might use on uh, your strategist just for the ammo boost. So this is gonna do it for us with this item overview of the followers. We'll come back next time and rank the accessories, which will be even crazier. So I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but I'll figure it out by next week. Until then, bye.